Yes, and I respect that. But my client has a championship to contest. So if you want our participation, I'm afraid the concessions are mandatory. Yes, that's fine. Get back to me when you can. Goodbye. No one ever just signs the contract. Anyway, thanks for coming by on such short notice. I just needed to cover a couple of quick things with you before you race. Firstly, as requested, there's a copy of your contract. It's a rolling deal. However, the team reserves right of termination if you fail to meet performance standards. Your second driver for now, but work hard, hit your targets, and I'll be able to sweeten the deal. I'm also looking to get you into some invitational events throughout the season. The experience and exposure from these will be great for your image. Plus, you'll get to drive some nice historic cars. Now then, go get ready for the next session. And good luck. What is up guys, welcome to the start of our 2018 career mode. We're a little bit late uh, with everything else that's, um, everyone else that has come out. Uh, some people got the jump on us, but I promise we are going to make up for it with everything we have for this season. I want to show you the first lap we have in um, in this Haas car. We are with Haas, um, obviously if you watch the pre-season video, you can kind of get an informa a little bit of information about uh, the expectations, where everyone's supposed to be, and... Uh, stuff like that so obviously as you can see we are running the halo on the top of our car all the cars will be running the halo um when they're on board and stuff like that i can't quite do it for exterior shots so i do apologize for that but that would take week about weeks in at one race and it would just be ridiculous maybe in the future but by then by then f1 2018 will be out and all the cars will have um all the stuff so obviously at, the, at this point in time you can see the halo is covering up the rev limiter and my logo is covering up the the mini map that's not there um it's only there for this uh for this lap so when it comes to the race the map the track map won't be there and the uh revs they won't be there either so you won't have to worry about that um being a bit frustrating and then obviously you've got my um oc um ocd it's not ocd is it whatever it's called my display um at the very top i've always ran it like that just for that but it's going to be an interesting season. Um, I pre-recorded the first four races. The um, fourth one didn't actually record properly. It just recorded the audio. So that kind of sucked. But um, the first three races are interesting. All, of, all three of them are very different. Um, it's going to be interesting to see your guys' response. And obviously see how well this does. I've enjoyed making this um, and stuff like that. Honestly, I'm excited to finally get this on the way. But... Um, Obviously, with the whole cinematics and the normal stuff, I'll let you get in and uh, meet and Chris. Ah, you got my message. Perfect. Welcome to home away from home. We get more real-time data from the factory now than ever before, and it all comes through here. So I have to spend more time checking over the reports and less time hunting you down in the hospitality suite. And to that end, we... Sorry, just a sec. Yeah, Chris, is this important? I'm in the middle of something. Huh, okay. Right. Um... Well, that makes no sense. Have Sarah reset the simulation and run it again. Okay. Sorry about that. As I was saying, we've set up a desk for you at the front here. You can get onto the network from your laptop, so make sure to check the R&D screen regularly. And let us know how you want to use the data that we've collected over the weekend and through the practice programs. Also, bear in mind that the news from the factory won't always be good. Sometimes tests fail, like you've seen just now. And when that happens, we have to divert additional resources to fix it. Say la vie, I'm afraid. So, obviously, he's the smarter version of me. Um, he's obviously going to look after us this season. And yes, there is my mug uh, underneath the Haas logo in a Haas overall. So, obviously, we've got a little bit of updates. Now, the update system for this crew is going to be a little bit all over the place. Um... It's, I'm going to try and keep it as consistent as possible 
with everything that's going on, but in some cases it's not going to be very consistent. Um, in, at some points of the season I'll be able to show you it race by race, and other seasons I won't be able to do that. Obviously this being the first race I'll be able to show you a um, little bit of everything. We're going to up upgrade the car. I think the one thing we're really going to upgrade most is well, probably reliability. Uh, that's going to be a real, uh, real difficult issue. We're going to do our best to stick to the three power units. I can already see that we're going to have to use more. But um, in terms of realism, I will obviously try and stick to um, stick to the three. I'll do my best with that in regards to that. If I can't, I can't. But I'll uh, I'll do best I can. Same with the gearbox. There's only three gearboxes as well. That's going to be the struggle. Um, I'm expecting to take penalties um, throughout the season. But, you know, it is what it is. And um, try and keep as much uh, realism in this as possible as we actually do um, upgrade a few of our reliability. But it's almost time to get into the race and we'll have a qualifying report from all Flatches or Nick. So uh, go on, take it away there, buddy. Hello and welcome to the Australian Grand Prix. The sun has disappeared from the sunny city of Melbourne and we've been greeted with a deluge of rain for the race. Q1 reflected pre-season testing for the lower teams. Charles Leclerc didn't make it out of his garage due to technical difficulties. Marcus Ericsson and Lance Stroll were the two lowest of the competing drivers, behind Stoffel Van Dorn and Sergei Sorotkin. Q2 was an interesting one. Both Force Indias didn't make it to Q3, and the surprises of the session were Carlos Sainz and Romain Grosjean also not making the cut. On the other hand, Pierre Gasly snuck into Q3, although he didn't make it any higher than 10th. Rookie Chris Dixon managed to place ahead of Nico Hülkenberg, while Hapmal Max Verstappen lost out to Fernando Alonso, who placed P6. Current world champion Lewis Hamilton struggled and managed to finish behind Daniel Ricciardo. Valtteri Bottas placed between both of the Ferraris, while Sebastian Vettel took the first pole position of the season, with teammate Kimi Raikkonen demoted with a grid penalty for changing engine components. It's almost time for lights out here at the circuit. Can Vettel hold on to his first place? Will Hamilton come through the field? What will Kimi Raikkonen manage to do starting from lower down? And how will the rookie Chris Dixon fare? Only time will tell. I'll see you after the race. Thank you very much, Nick. Very chirpy and very energetic as ever. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, the uh, all the track boards have now been updated. Um, they weren't updated via the uh, first lap we did, but we obviously got them um, all done, ready and installed for the start of our first race. Now, this is not going to be... An easy race as you um, heard from the qualifying report it was quite difficult for ourselves um, to try and actually get amongst everyone and stuff like that but we're not going to try and um, do as best we can obviously we got into the top uh, top 10 which is obviously a goal we are um, expected to get about p16 or p15 I believe um, in terms of that so it's gonna be interesting to see how well we can perform um, as we line up to our grid slot just behind Fernando Alonso and um, with Kimi Raikkonen out of sync, it's going to be very interesting to see what we can achieve um, in terms of everything else. It's going to be a fantastic start, hopefully towards the race. But um, anything can happen in these conditions, especially in the first round of the season. Anyone could pull um, a retirement. And we're just going to have to see what we can do. We are ready for the lights to go out here at the Australian Grand Prix for round one of the season. We are underway for the first time. Sebastian Vettel gets off the start very well. Valtteri Bottas on the left-hand side. Hamilton just a little bit behind there. We've got Vettel coming into turn one. Looks like he's going to go relatively unchallenged. Looks like Hamilton is going to be fighting with the Red Bulls um, at this current speed. Vettel, a little bit of a gap already. Not too bad. We've got um, Bottas clear of Daniel Ricciardo, who's being challenged by Lewis Hamilton. And you can see Verstappen and Alonso going side by side in the background. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see who can come out on top. Daniel Ricciardo still fighting off Lewis Hamilton as we come around at the left-hand turn. Uh, Verstappen still giving a little bit of a tussle with Alonso as we jump on board with ourselves. And you can see we're going to switch to the left-hand side uh, to try and get past Fernando Alonso if possible. And we're going to take him around the outside if we can get a good amount of traction and that we can. So we are up one position from when we started. Hamilton and Ricardo are still going side by side as we enter um, into the middle part of sector two. We've got our teammate Roman Grosjean who is going to go past Nico Hulkenberg into the chicane. So fantastic job by him. But still Daniel Ricardo and Lewis Hamilton as we come into the third and final sector are going to go side by side through this very fast chicane and uh, Hamilton is going to get the job done. So fair play to Lewis Hamilton. We're going to go a little bit further back onto ourselves and you can see we're getting pushed by Verstappen against the wall and uh, we're going to try and take as much opportunity as we can in this opening lap 
and uh, looks like we're going to be able to dispose of two cars if we can um, on the first lap. So that's Alonso and Verstappen who are going to be in our rear mirrors for the race. Sebastian Vettel leading this race. He's got a little bit of a gap to Valtteri Bottas. So Bottas keeping Sebastian Vettel honest at this point. While uh, obviously Hamilton managed to fight off uh, Daniel Ricciardo, who is the next car. While we're setting purple, uh, purple sectors um, and laps at this point. So we're doing pretty well in terms of race, but have to see how it pans out. We're on lap four, we've got our teammate Roman Grosjean, who is uh, looking at the Toro Rosso of Pierre Gasly, and Gasly's just going to lock his front tyres and uh, essentially just give uh, our teammate a free position. So thank you very much, Pierre. That is much appreciated. Moving on to a little bit further um, on the same lap. We're in the uh, slipstream of Daniel Ricciardo. Hamilton's not getting away too far. We're going to try and close up as best we can to Ricciardo. We'll have a go down the inside. This is where Hamilton was Ricciardo. So Ricardo is not very solid around this part of the track. We get a bit onto the grass. We're going to get the uh, move just about done on the Australian. He had a really good qualifying, but he's not making use of it. And that's Sergio Perez, who I would assume, just about how slow he's going, has a puncture. And he's literally just came past the pit lane. So Sergio Perez in a world of hurt uh, at this point in time. So Sergio Perez is going to have to make it around the entire lap before he can even get to the pit stop. So that's not good for him. We're going to come on to lap six, uh, elves and, again, purple sector. So we, we are absolutely flying in these conditions. Uh, we did have a wet setup on. Uh, we set that in uh, the fine. So we could, could we check the weather forecast and we could tell that it was going to be a wet one. We're on board with our teammate Roman Grosjean. Uh, as you like in sector two, I assume that would be for Perez. Indeed it is. He is just ahead of our teammate and he's going to hold up our teammate quite a bit. Which is um, obviously not good for our teammate. Obviously, you want to get as much points as possible. Being in the first race, um, it's bound to happen. But you can see everyone started to close up a little bit to Vettel. He hasn't shaken bot Bottas. Hamilton has dragged us along with. So, me and Hamilton are actually catching up to uh, Bottas and Vettel. Well, Hamilton goes into this, so are we. We're going to do exactly what Hamilton does and um, try and maybe get the jump on Bottas and Vettel if we both have good uh, outlaps in these conditions. But. At this point in time, it's it's an interesting race because obviously Vettel and Bottas sprinted away at the start and then now we've caught up to them quite a lot. Uh, mostly thank Hamilton um, and that, but I can tell you we have a speeding in the pit lane. So if we don't come in and serve a stop-go penalty, we'll just get five seconds added on to our time. And obviously we will incur penalty points, which I'll be including in this season of my career. My penalty points will be taking effect depending on what the AI do and how I do. That will um, determine if they get a race ban, grid penalty, everything like that. We have Kimi Raikkonen now going past Peter Gasly all the way around the outside. So fair play to Kimi. Obviously Kimi started a little, little further down. So we managed to come out just behind him. Did me and Hammer. We're going to come across the start finish line to start lap 9 I believe. Um, this screen is too small. But uh, Bottas does come out ahead. So Hamilton doesn't get past his teammate. Neither do we. And obviously we got uh, Kimi Raikkonen in between all of us. But Hamilton gets a poor exit um, out of the little fast chicane. And we're going to cruise up to the back of it. We're going to place our car down the inside of Lewis Hamilton and take the curb. And we have some phenomenal pace in these conditions. The Mercedes probably more suited to a dry setup than uh, the wet. So we're going to have a replay. So you can see we're just all over the gearbox of that Mercedes coming out and just poking our nose out into some clean air and uh, actually making it down the inside of Lewis Hamilton. Raikkonen will be the next car that we are going to pursue and hopefully it won't take us too long because we're in a, a good place for a podium but on the other hand Sebastian and Vettel is staying out. I did not factor this in that you, you can do this on a no-stop strategy. Vettel is staying out and it looks like both of the Red Bulls and Fernando Alonso are staying out. All the cars, three of the cars that were behind us are staying out so if we had to come in We'd be in P2 by now, which is so frustrating. But hopefully, um, they will come in and maybe we can pit. But Raikkonen making a similar mistake to what Hamilton made. So we're going to be all over the back of the Ferrari as well, just like Hamilton. Pitch a perfect move on um, what we did to the all-time world champion. I'm going to come round and put ourselves up another position. Obviously, Raikkonen on uh, older tyres, which will aid that uh, taking manoeuvre quite a bit, to be fair. So Stoffel Van Dorn is trying to make some moves. Um, Esteban Ocon, Van Dorn. Awful qualifying down in 17th or there or thereabouts. We've got the two best friends of the paddock, Pierre Gasly and Charles Leclerc, going side by side. These two are great friends 
Uh, hopefully it doesn't end in shambles um, as no one wants to see best friends kind of lives it over a race. We don't want a repeat of Hamilton and Sutil. We've got Sergei Sorokin defending from Brendan Hartley, the other Toro Rosso driver. Um, Williams so far at the back of the grid. Um, bit disappointing that Brendan Hartley can get the overtaken, the overtaken done there, but we have pulled up to the back of Valtteri Bottas, who is in P5. Uh, yep, P5. This is, it's my math, you know, leave me alone. So we're in the slip stream of Valtteri Bottas, maybe having a make, make, maybe going to make a move into turn one, <coughs> turn three, if anything. When the clue's up to the back of him, we're going to hold on our brakes, and he just goes straight on, and he doesn't actually... He essentially just lets us through. So we're going to have a look at a replay um, from exterior shots. He just um, he just pulls a brake and just, he just couldn't catch it. Like his tyre just didn't wasn't making any contact with the surface of the track. So he just catches um, catches a brake. And um, you can, from the onboard perspective as well, he just locks his tyre. It wasn't a massive one. He didn't go straight on into the gravel. But um, obviously, nonetheless, it didn't help him out whatsoever. We've got a three-way battle with Ericsson, Ocon, and Grosjean, our teammate. Making some pretty solid moves uh, so far this race. At this point, he's battling for essentially what will be 10th place. Ericsson is in the points at this point in time. Ocon trying to get some points. But um, Ericsson has drove a fantastic race. Our Salva is good um, in these type of conditions. Grosjean's going to go down the inside of Esteban Ocon. And um, looks like he'll make that stick and potentially take Ericsson within the next few laps maybe get some points we're going to resume this battle between brendan harley and sergei sorokin sorokin looks a little bit more squirmish on this lap hartley is definitely a lot closer um i'm not sure if he'll be able to maintain the same um defensive move he did last time as hartley's a lot further forward and he's going to go all the way around the outside of the russian rookie driver and he got Lance Stroll in the background going incredibly slow just to note perez is still in last place at this point but this is what we talked about, Roman Grosjean looking at Marcus Ericsson um, on the, the penultimate lap for them, but on the final lap of the race for the race leader. And you can see Grosjean is just, he's stretching his advantage at the moment. Nico Hulkenberg is behind Marcus Ericsson at the moment. So Ericsson doing a solid drive in P11, but here is the current race leader on his final tour of the circuit. Sebastian Vettel is going to come round to start the final corner of the Australian Grand Prix. Vettel is going to take win number one of the season. He converted it from pole and you can't really ask much more from the four-time world champion. Sebastian Vettel clinches the first race down under and it's not too bad. We've got Fernando Alonso coming across the line in fourth place which is fantastic for him. We were chasing him but um, it looks like one more lap and we would have had him as he has to pull to the side of the track immediately. I'm uh, not sure if that was fuel or engine related, but we'll have to see. As we come across the line, um, just behind Fernando Alonso, it does come up and say we're in fourth, but it was actually fifth. I have no idea why. Um, it did that obviously because Alonso technically retired. Um, we actually did manage to make it because he came home fifth, but that was a crazy start to the season. Absolutely enjoyed that race, being, being as we are actually quite competitive in this Haskar. Sebastian Vettel from Daniel Ricciardo and then obviously Max Verstappen who didn't stop which was really frustrating because that could have been us P2 or P1 but that's been it for me I'll see you for the next race in Bahrain guys I'll give you back to Nick to uh, learn about the results bye bye It was Sebastian Vettel who claimed the top step on the podium after managing to go all the way through the race without making a pit stop Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen achieved the same strategy to claim both other podium positions. Fernando Alonso returned with a bang with his new Renault Power enabling him to get to fourth place, a better result that he managed during the entire three years of the partnership with Honda. Dixon was the best of the one stoppers beating both Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton, both of whom were struggling for pace in the wet. Kimi Raikkonen managed to come through in eighth position, while Stoffel Vandal also powered through the field starting from 17th and finishing in 9th. Roman Grosjean came the final points paying position in 10th place. Being outshone by his rookie teammate sure will turn a few heads in the paddock after this race. Bahrain is our next stop on the calendar and time will tell if the Mercedes pace is only slow in the wet or is it a further serious issue. I've been Nick Allflat and I'll see you next time in the deserts of Bahrain.